Hey guys, what's up? And welcome back to Coaster Brothers. In today's video, we are going to be doing a full in-depth review of Nickelodeon Universe. Ever since I uploaded our Nickelodeon Universe blog about a month ago, people, it's, it's been in high demand that I do a full in-depth Nickelodeon Universe review. And I know in that blog, I've summed up my thoughts on the park. But I thought maybe I'd go further into it with a whole review on it. So that's what we're going to be doing today, guys. But before we begin this video, you guys must subscribe to the channel and turn on those post notifications and definitely like the video. And yeah, if you disagree with any of my thoughts on Nickelodeon Universe, definitely let me know in the comments. And yeah, I just love to know you, your guys' thoughts on Nickelodeon Universe if you've been there. Which Nickelodeon universe am I talking about, though? I'm talking about the one at American Dream Mall in New Jersey. So, yeah, let's get right into the review. All right, guys, starting, our things, starting things off with our first category. Our first category is Coaster Collection. The Nickelodeon universe is home to five coasters. It's home to a Gerslauer Eurofighter, an Intamin Launched Roller Coaster, then it's also home to a Chance Rides Family Coaster, a Gerslauer Spinning Coaster, and an Intamin Surf Rider. And while all these coasters can be great, there are some downsides. They are constantly down. So the Intamin Launch Coaster is Sandy's Blasting Bronco. And it has been down, like closed, for months now. Enthusiasts are saying it's been closed since October. When I went, it was closed. The trains were not ready to be dispatched. They were like unfinished trains. And yeah, it's not good. But the main reason people come to Nickelodeon Universe is not for those roller coasters. Not for Sandy's Blasting Bronco. Not for Timmy's Half Pipe Havoc. Not for any of those other coasters except for Shell Razor, a mere clone of Takabisha from Fuji Q Highland. It reaches a top speed of, I believe, 65 miles per hour. And it has the steepest drop of any roller coaster on the planet, guys. And this coaster is severely underrated. Whenever I go to Nickelodeon Universe, it has no line. Like, literally no line. It's always a walk-on. And for other rides, like Timmy's Half by Havoc, like a 15-minute wait. Which I didn't understand, because Shell Razor, I mean, come on, it's 141-foot beast. Um, so yeah, it, it doesn't, this park doesn't really have that great of a coaster collection. I mean, when Sandy's is running, this park has a great one-two punch. Because those are, it has three launch coasters, which is insane. It has more launch coasters than all the other coasters in the park. Um, with Timmy's, Sandy's, and Shell Razor. And uh, of course, Shell Razor is the elite one here. But still, with Sandy's and Shell Razor, just a great one two punch for this park. But the problem with this park is that whenever I go, there's always like at least four different attractions closed. And it's always been Sandy's Blasting Bronco for one of them. So for Coaster Collection, this park because it has a small amount and they aren't really that top tier other than shell razor i'm going to be giving this category a six next category is flat ride collection and guys nickelodeon universe has one of the best flat ride collections of all time <laughs> they have a zamperla not a giant discovery um but they have a zamperla pendulum um, and they have a drop tower, they have the Angs air gliders, I, for, I, for, I don't know what model it is, but, yeah, they have that, it's just great flat ride collection here, um, and I know a lot of the flat rides are kitty flat rides, but they have really some solid flat rides, like big drop tower, you get a great V with the Manhattan skyline, with the Angs air gliders, um, just, like, you invert a lot on that, and then you got the inverting pendulum, which is Crank Prime Pandemonium. But it's not the best flat ride collection out there, but it sure is good for an indoor theme park. So I'm going to be giving this category a five. 
The next category is food. And sorry, I don't really have much footage to show you guys of food for this park. Um, but basically, this category is like how many options you have for eating, where you can eat. And guys, Nickelodeon Universe is probably one of the worst parks for food. Guys, there is n like literally no food places anywhere in this park other than a stand that sells pretzels and chips and like, f refrigerated sandwiches, so food is getting a two. And same goes for bathroom, guys. I don't have any footage of bathrooms, but this park has... So, because of the small footprint of this park, you can't really expect too many bathrooms, but there are two bathrooms in this park, one near Shell Razor, and then one right under the banana roll of Shell Razor. So, bathrooms, I mean, you, you have two options, and you can easily access them, so bathrooms is an eight. Now for customer service. And guys, I haven't really gotten to experience customer service at Nickelodeon Universe, because I've never tried to get anything out of the employees, but from what I've heard, the customer service is bad here. Um, the employees don't really care that much, to be honest. Um... I really don't have that much of an opinion on customer service, so I'm not going to be including this in the final score. The next category is park theming. And guys, I think you already know where this is going. So before I reveal the obvious score, Nickelodeon Universe is themed to Nickelodeon. All the characters in the TV shows on Nickelodeon, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Spongebob... All of those characters. So, I think you already know what's going to happen. Before I tell you guys, though, um, this park may be themed in Nickelodeon Universe, but don't expect that high quality of theming around the park. I mean, there are some cool spots, like these statues of... Not really statues, but like these cool stuff. Nickelodeon characters, like the truck outside the entrance to TMNT Shellraiser. And a lot of other cool stuff. So theming is going to be getting a 10. Alright, the next category is a different type of category. And this is the location in which the park is. Meaning, like, how many access points are there? Like, where can you access this from? So Nickelodeon Universe is in East Rutherford, New Jersey. And it is in the American Dream Mall. But if we scroll out for a second... So there it is, the American Dream Mall, right there. And... Nickelodeon Universe is very, like, very close to Manhattan. So there's Manhattan right there. And if we measure the distance from Nickelodeon Universe to right across the Hudson River into Manhattan, at least I think that's the river. Um, yeah. Um, it's about five, like, four to six miles. So if you live in Manhattan, you're really only four or six miles away, meaning you're about 15 to 20 minutes away. And yeah, because it's in a populated area, we're going to be giving this category a 10. Now for the atmosphere of the park. And what I mean by this is like the feel you get when you're in the park, the surroundings, foliage, that kind of stuff. And... There isn't really that much atmosphere. I mean, other than the theming to the Nickelodeon characters, that's really it. It's loud in the park. It's echoey. It can. It's just very loud and very hard to vlog in. You'll see what I mean if you watch my vlog. Um, but they do have some trees in pots around the park, and I really like those. But it isn't the common theme park atmosphere you'd be expecting. So for atmosphere, we're going to be giving a six. The next category is park layout. And what I mean by this is, like, how easy is it to find yourself, like, how how easy is it to find your, to find your way around the park? And because of its small footprint, I'd say it is pretty easy to find your way around the park. I mean, you can see one end of the park from the other end. So for this category, we are going to be giving a nine. Our next category is consistency, and our final category. And, guys, what I mean by this is, you know, for a well-in, like, 
let's say an amusement park has been around for like 50 years, right? And they're, they're probably consistently adding roller coasters. But because Nickelodeon Universe opened two, three years ago, they haven't really had the time to add new roller coasters. And they don't really have the room to unless they decide to remove a roller coaster. And they're going in the wrong direction, guys. Because of Sandy's Blasting Bronco being closed for a long time now, four, five months, I'm starting to doubt this park. And they can't really fit another coaster in that spot. So if Sandy's does get removed, they really can't put anything in its place, which I am very, very upset about. Because this park is only going downhill. More and more rides are closed every single time I go. And it's not very consistent at this park. So, for consistency, our final category, I'm going to be giving a two. All right, guys. So, I have summed up the score. And our final score for Nickelodeon Universe is a 6.8, which is not that great of a score. My personal score for Nickelodeon Universe, a five. Because, in my personal thoughts i don't like shell razor that much because i get a headache on it every time so trust me the layout is awesome it is forceful a lot of times i love the launch but after that drop there's a severe pothole at the bottom and i just get a really bad headache i don't know why and i hate those girls over the shoulder restraints um but yeah so my personal score is 6. The final score, though, is a 6.8. If you haven't been in Nickelodeon Universe and you're an enthusiast, I definitely recommend you check it out. But it's not one of those parks that you're going to frequently visit because it does not have a lot of rides with the thrill factor. Like, compared to Cedar Point, which I already rated a 10 um, for my personal score. But the final score was 9.8. But still, still, it's not even close to that. But I do love... The indoor aspect, it's very unusual but cool at the same time. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you disagree with me, definitely let me know in the comments. I really want to hear your opinion on this park. And yeah, make sure to subscribe and stay on the thrill side of life.